Hi, and welcome to the World Beyond Belief. My name is Paul Marco, and with us today again is Dr. Karlstrom. He's given us some incredible interviews in the past. I'm sure this will be no exception. For people who don't know me, my name is Paul Marco, and I have a PhD in psychology. I've taught also academically in, in, from kindergarten to uh, postdoctoral studies, sometimes art, sometimes consciousness studies. But I spend most of my life as a consultant to big corporations all over the world. Corporations like Novartis, Merck, Harley Davidson, Ford, Lucent Technology. I, I could go on and on, but that was my life and that's what I did. I also uh, co authored a book called The Post Conventional Personality with a couple other academicians. It's available through Sunny Press. And that's me. So that's why I'm so interested in this topic uh, of gang stalking that we're going to talk today. Let me turn you over to Dr. Eric Karlstrom for a little introduction, and then we'll get into the meat of the issue. Dr. Eric. Okay, well, thank you, uh, Dr. Paul Marco. I, I did not even realize you had a PhD in psychology. That's, that's great. Um, yeah, uh, we've had a number of very interesting uh, interviews that I think uh, you've got on your on your websites uh, that you and Mindy maintain. And uh, as we delve into gang stalking now for the second time, I think maybe we can start to um, draw or make uh, connections uh, between the information that we put out in the past um, uh, regarding, say, 911 and Alan Dulles, the first director of the CIA, and and the and the modern uh, organized gang stalking issue, um, I think we've got a lot of uh, positive feedback from the last uh, uh, interview we did on organized gang stalking. Let me just uh, briefly give my background. I uh, I retired from a 30-year. Uh, uh, career as a geography professor, physical geography, uh, in 2011. Uh, I've taught at three different universities and my field is in academics is uh, physical geography which involves uh, uh, landforms, soils, and reconstructing past environments uh, which of course uh, is uh, basically synonymous with paleoclimatology which is the, the earth science perspective on how the earth changes naturally. So I have, uh, after teaching for 30 years, I retired in 2011, but in effect I did not retire because I maintain four websites at the moment. Uh, one uh, I've just redone and I'm very proud of the way it looks now, so I'll mention it first, naturalclimatechange.us, also naturalclimatechange.org, and this uh, uh, it really does kind of fall right square in the middle of my own academic experience and background and research, uh, which is that the man-caused uh, global warming uh, uh, catastrophe we're told about all the time is is uh, is propaganda is is uh, fraudulent science uh, to meet political objectives, which I go into on my website. Uh, and, and ultimately connects with Agenda 21 of the United Nations, now Agenda 2030. It's kind of the centerpiece of this whole environmental scare tactic that, uh, uh, that the UN uh, uh, and uh, many, many powerful uh, corporate uh, players have, have pushed. Um, my, another site that we'll be referring to today is the uh, 911nwo.com website on which I have a lot of information showing again that 911 is a, a typical false flag state sponsored uh, synthetic terror event uh, again uh, uh, in order to terrorize the people and uh, advance certain political objectives uh, in the context of that site I live in Crestone, Colorado and which is a small town of 1500 but it was more or less founded by Maurice Strong of the United Nations mm -hmm. and his wife Hannah and their Manitou Foundation and Maurice Strong is the guy who's uh, Secretary General of the Rio Earth Summit in 1992 and uh, Canadian uh, also uh, Committee of 300 according to Dr. John Coleman and mm -hmm. uh, um, 
member of uh, our, uh, <clears throat> British MI6 operative, as well as uh, a billionaire uh, who's worn many, many, many different hats, both in the corporate world and the environmental world. But he basically founded the United Nations Environmental Program and uh, set the terms of reference for the global warming uh, research to exclude all natural climate change, unfortunately. <laughs> Therefore, keep the real scientists and the real science out of the debate. But that's important. That is important, and that, that is, of course, how, how this got shaped. And then governments have signed on to that and then donated to billions of dollars, uh, and, and the corporate uh, sector stands to make trillions of dollars if they can control all economic activity by limiting taxing fossil fuel use uh, and redistributing wealth across the country, deindustrializing the West, and et cetera, et cetera. Um, well, Creston Baca, where I live, has got some 30 spiritual groups uh, many of which I suppose you would qualify as cults. And uh, uh, so I investigated, I've been investigating that since I retired in 2011 in a, an extended series on uh, Is Creston Baca the Vatican City of the New World Order? Uh, an expose of the New World Religion. Well, I've always been interested in religion as a truth seeker, but there's dimensions of this that uh, have. Uh, have uh, really taken a lot of work to try to understand. So in the context of this, I, I've explored cults and mind control. Uh -huh. And uh, mind control is a very dark, dark subject, but it, 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 uh, the, uh, in, in, there's a chapter on my 911nwo.com website on the applications and history of mind control. Basically, uh, Nazi uh, paperclip scientists came, were imported into this country in, in right after World War II by the CIA and, and other intelligence agencies and into the Western Hemisphere. And uh, the Nazi uh, mind control experiments that went on in the concentration camps were, were continued, often by the same scientists, under uh, uh -huh. MKUltra and Project Bluebird and Project Artichoke and MK Search and MK Often, many of these things top, top, top secret, uh, but uh, much has now come out. Um, and uh, well, as it turns out, of course, it was Alan Dulles who in 1953 authorized uh, Project MK Ultra. And it was under Dulles that the uh, paperclip scientists from Nazi Germany came to this country. And, uh, of course, Dulles is also <clears throat> in charge of lots of coups and assassinations all over the world. So now we get into this darker realm of the shadow government, the intelligence uh, agencies that work on behalf of the Wall Street uh, and City of London uh, bankers and, and corporate masters of the universe and uh, secret societies all wrapped up together, a cult, and uh, you could call it the cult. Well, mm -hmm. what I've learned now recently, Paul, especially just in the last uh, several days preparing for this uh, interview, is that it's become really kind of, uh, well, okay, before I get jump into that, let me just say on my website, 911NWO, I've got now 12 uh, uh, articles and extended uh, information uh, pieces on organized gang stalking uh, itself. So this this then becomes kind of the, the direction that all this research that I've done on 911nwo.com leads is into this um, organized gang stalking as a global phenomenon as a weapons system yeah. carried out by intelligence agencies, um, not just the CIA, but the NSA, Homeland Security, and foreign intelligence services as a takedown system for the domestic population, um, and as an experimental program. In other words, we're dealing with the modern version of MK Ultra. So for those who you know have the stomach for it, please go and read my article about the history and applications of mind control, which is a chapter six uh, under mind control and cults on my 911nwo.com site. It took me a year to write that article. And the reason is because you get into such dark, dark, dark things. I mean, the, the Illuminati um, power structure of the world is a cult, and it's a satanic cult. Right. And uh, it goes way back thousands of years, and the goal is take over the world. <laughs> well, take over the world, 
and and create one world government, one world religion, and uh, and and control the population, uh, reduce the middle class to zero, and reduce the population to slaves, and, and or genocide them. Us, I should say, because those of us who are not in the Illuminati, uh, and for instance, who are targeted, are either the victims of uh, revenge. And corporations, this, this is a technology, the, the gang stalking is a technology, uh, organized gang stalking that has many names, um, but it involves uh, overt harassment by, you know, thousands of people across the country and the world uh, with many, many different tricks that have been refined, were refined by the Soviets under the Cheka secret police, were, and that was passed over to the East German communist uh, uh, government uh, that became the basis of the Stasi secret police uh, in which about one in six of the citizens of the country uh, were enlisted as citizen spies or snitches to help the secret police police the streets. If you control the streets, you control the country. And uh, this is now um, very well known. I mean, uh, of course, the East uh, Soviet Union fell apart in 1989. And with it, you know, the Berlin Wall came down, and, and uh, there were admissions by the government of what had happened. And in fact, uh, there was a huge building which had files on everybody in the whole country. And the files were then open to the population for a certain number of months, maybe a year, something like that. People were able, people who had suffered under this hellish communist system, were now for the first time able to go in and look at the files, the dossiers, the government. Right had compiled on them as individuals. And, you know, there's this great movie called The Lives of Others, in which a very, uh, very uh, intelligent, tasteful movie maker dealt with this issue. Uh -huh. And in the, in the uh, you know, special features at the end, he actually shows people going through those files and uh, learning about, you know, what the government knew about aunt so-and-so and uncle so-and-so and this person who was disappeared and this person who was killed. Well, okay, so the, the Cheka of Soviet Union, the Stasi of, of East Germany, of course, the Nazi Gestapo, uh, and uh, Hungary, Poland, uh, Portugal, many, many countries have had these kinds of uh, citizen spy programs, which, which then uh, becomes the basis or a big part of um, organized gang stalking, which is occurring rampantly now in the United States, probably at least 100,000 victims, maybe up to a million, based on different estimates, and, and it is worldwide. And um, it is a surveillance uh, harassment uh, program. Some, much of it is experimental to see, you know, how to break people, what's their breaking point, what breaks them. Um, it is a system, a uh, worldwide network or system, a weapon system, which, uh, you know, can be turned up and turned down, yeah. which, which can be applied as needed by governments as they become more and more despotic and totalitarian, mm -hmm. as, as our United States government is, is uh, certainly well down that road now. <clears throat> I applaud your decision to move to Ecuador. I, <laughs> <laughs> the more I learn, the more I realize that was a good decision. <laughs> you can't get off the earth, though. You can't you get, can't off, get the off the earth. earth. That's right. You can't get it, and, and in that sense, really, there is no place to hide. That's as we right. Brought up last time, um, but yes. Yeah, so uh, this is a, a dimension of this that I think I'd like to explore with you today: um, uh, the gang stalking as a weapons system. Mm -hmm. Now, again, you know, any time you want to learn about anything, your best bet is to go to people who know about it. And mm -hmm. let me just give two. Uh, there are several references of individuals who I think our audience might want to investigate. Uh, again, I, I would hope that in our discussion we are reaching some targeted individuals who need help, who are vastly harassed, confused, and terrorized. This is a terror, terrorism system. Um, and I would hope we would also reach some in the middle America who, who are maybe not directly affected but who have a heart. Mm -hmm. And realize that this is not good, right. you know. Uh, well, if they came for him this this week, well, they could come for me next week. Is right. there, that that great quote? Right. You know? And uh, uh, and also, we might even reach some of the perps, many of the perpetrators, many of whom I think don't understand the full dimensions of this 
system and how satanic and satanically evil it is. So those names I would suggest, Julianne McKinney, a uh, U.S. Army intelligence officer who herself has been a uh, target for some four decades, has given a great uh, interview online and uh, um, let me see if I can get the title of that. I've got, I've got various things on my computer here. Um, uh, Eric, we are getting uh, responses from people from the last interview uh -huh. that are being targeted and know about this and really want to reach out to you and everybody else who's uh, coming under this, uh, the assault of this weapon. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Julianne McKinney, uh, I think, did a nice job in a 1994 article that she wrote. Now, by that time, she'd already retired. Uh, and that is uh, an article that was called Microwave Harassment and Mind Control Experimentation. I've now got it posted on my site under War on Terror articles, under New World Order, uh, and that may be directed energy weapons too. Yeah, uh, mind, uh, Microwave Harassment and Mind Control Experimentation by Julianne McKinney. <clears throat> and an excellent, excellent article. I just got around to reading it, the whole thing just uh, yesterday or the day before. And she talks about the connection between what the KGB was doing and what our own government is doing now. And she uh, was involved or is involved with a group of ex-intelligence uh, officers who are trying to blow the whistle on what the intelligence agencies have been doing. So you can see why she would have been targeted for right. revenge. Uh, but she's very savvy about all this, and uh, we can learn a lot about... Um, you know, again, an intelligence officer. She she knows the big picture, right? And uh, and is smart enough to write it down. Another uh, great one is Dr. John Hall, who was an anesthesiologist from San Antonio, Texas, who uh, also is a target and has worked with targets and has written a couple books now on on organized gang stalking and especially the microwave, the satellite weapons. Uh, systems, the electronic weapons, the psychotronic weapons, the directed energy weapons, the acoustic weapons, all of these weapons that that uh, uh, that the military and that industrial complex has developed in the last uh, 50 some years. Wow. See what people don't realize uh, probably is that the MK Ultra uh, mind control experiments of the CIA had 148 different sub projects in which the CIA farmed out all kinds of uh, uh, ways to control the mind, so to create a Manchurian candidate, an assassin, you know, uh -huh. somebody who would do the bidding, say, of an intelligence agency without their awareness, and then forget all about it so they could, you know, not be questioned, etc. Right. Um, <clears throat> 148 projects included, you know, use of drugs, use of pain, uh, hypnosis, uh, every conceivable kind of drug you can think of. They did a heck of a lot with LSD back in the 50s yes. before they dumped it on the American youth in the 60s. And they knew it was a weapon of war and that it produced psychosis. Mm -hmm. And then they put their people in the major cities in San Francisco making this stuff in laboratories right. and handing it out to everybody. You know, the president right. handed right. out to <laughs> <laughs> just, Let's just see if we can all go crazy here. Right. And so if the 60s seemed kind of crazy, well, they, you know, they were kind of crazy, and that was one of the reasons. But, but see, the whole Part B of the mind, the MK Ultra, which uh, was blacked out, uh, uh, and in John Mark's book about In Search of the Manchurian Candidate, um, was on electronic weapons, starting in 1953. By 1973. Of uh, a guy named Frey had figured out how to put uh, voices in your in your skull, uh, you know, not using audit, the auditory characteristic of the ear, but you know, using kind of uh, uh, well, using microwaves. It, it, it simulates right. voices, and you can actually put a voice. You could, some people talk about hearing the the head of the CIA directly in their head, right. and they actually recognized his voice and wrote something about it. Then he stopped talking. But uh, well, they can insert other. <laughs> yeah, they can amazing. insert other people's voices in your head. They can insert your voice in your head, and of course, when it's others, 
then, you know, this can be a voice of God kind of thing. Right. And this was used in the first Iraq <laughs> war, you know, to, to neutralize the Iraqi army. 150 Americans were able to defeat, you know, thousands of Iraqis because these Iraqis were told by Allah, you sure. know, and, and, and they were, their, their, their moods were changed into fear and anxiety, you know, so, and, and they just, you know, dropped down and dropped their weapons, you know, right. and so this stuff is a war weapon, mm -hmm. and of course, it has military applications. Okay, so we've, we've, we've talked about Julianne McKinney being a great, uh, uh, source, uh, Dr. John Hall, Dr. Nick Begich of Alaska, son, mm -hmm. son of a senator, who's done a lot of work with HARP and mind control. And all of these people are on YouTube interviews. So again, if you're if, uh, speaking to our listening audience, if, if you happen to be a, a TI and you're in this world of, of, you know, fear and terror and uncertainty and you don't know what's going on and you're being harassed, right. uh, the first stage, of course, is the overt harassment, the street theater, the gaslighting. The, uh, the break ins to the home, even staged accidents, uh, uh, all kinds of you know psychological harassment. It's, it's, it's basically a psychological war to break the individual personality down. Uh, uh, and of course, in lots of different kinds of people are targeted, but very commonly they're, 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 uh, they're whistleblowers and dissidents and, and Christians and people like that. Uh, a lot of the people that seem to have the courage to stand up to this are Christians. Uh, mm -hmm. So whatever that is, that faith uh, and commitment um, allows them, Dr. John Hall certainly is. Um, and uh, I, I can't think of any other examples, but, but as you get into it, you will find others who are uh, speaking out, who are you know, kind of of that persuasion. Uh, former targets, etc. One is Michael F. Bell, and he's done an interview which is very fascinating. With uh, he was a targeted individual, a, a screenwriter from uh, um, from Hollywood, who was targeted. Doesn't really know why, uh, but uh, his life became hell. And if you don't mind, kind of to set the stage, and then I'll shut up, and we can have a discussion a little bit here. Um, uh, let me just read, uh, uh, maybe a little unconventional, a little bit of the dialogue. Actually, uh, there's a coast-to-coast -coast interview that I recommend to our, our listeners uh, in which Roger Tolsas, a private investigator from Los Angeles, and Michael Bell, Michael F. Bell, who's an author of a book called uh, Invisible Crime about gang stalking, are talking about gang stalking, surveillance, harassment, RF, and high-tech weapons. And there's a fantastic interview, and, and then there's the uh, call-ins at the end, uh, and in which several of the callers say, thank, thank you so much, you've just explained what's going on. Right. You know, for years, I had no idea what was going on. Right. And this private investigator and this, this very brave victim, mm -hmm. target, Michael Bell, who wrote the book, uh, make this, you know, uh, very, very cogent, coherent case of how it all works. Um, and then, and then at the very end, and this is what I'd like to read, uh, a caller who was a TIA, a TI, uh, uh, targeted individual from Bakersfield named Tom Stern calls in. Here's what he says. This guy knows his stuff. Good. Happy to be on your show. I've been a victim of this electronic harassment ringing in the ears, keeping me up all night. It's wonder weapons from U.S. News and World Report to keep the enemy from sleeping with microwave, sonic, or acoustic weapons. This is Dr. Alvin Bird's technology, who was the electromagnetic weapons director of the Marine Corps. You can look up Dr. Paul Taylor, Captain Paul Taylor of the Navy, his microwave millimeter wave weapons that will debilitate anybody on the battlefield. Captain Paul Taylor, Dr. Ross Addy, a-D-E-Y, and Dr. Jose Delgado. He wasn't just putting chips in a bull, he put them in human beings and made them move like a mechanical toy. Dr. Ross Aidy, Dr. Alvin Bird, Dr. Elizabeth Rouscher. My brother and I had a falling out with a crime boss. All of a sudden we get put in this predatory gang stalking program that the C CIA and the mob run both together. And a guy came up to me telling me he was a CIA Illuminati and he's the terrorist who's going to make me look like a terrorist if he wants. He told me he can make me drive off the road. This was three or four years ago. 
I thought he was crazy. Then I realized when the ringing in my ears started, it's not normal ringing when it keeps you up all night and imitates tinnitus. Most of the people I've investigated are that are victims of mind control, the electronic harassment part, have some kind of ringing in the ears and it st simulates tinnitus. Now I can dispel any doubt of any doubters and any listeners who might doubt this if they look up Dr. Jose Delgado's technology, Dr. Ross Adi's technology, Dr. Elizabeth Roster's technology, uh, this is all going back to MK Ultra and, and that era. Uh, Elizabeth Roucher's technology saying she can make anybody feel any way they want. The CIA's Project Pandora, when they were mapping and cataloging different radio frequencies to manipulate different parts of the brain. I can dispel anybody's doubts whatsoever. The thing that gets me is that the psychiatric profession protects these people. And it was CIA psychiatrists that wrote the Bible, the psychiatric Bible, the DSM. And if they, and they say, if oh, if anybody believes that someone else put something in them, like a chip or a microplant, etc., then they must be certifiably crazy. They're mentally ill. They protect these people. That is the psychiatrists, the spy psychiatrists who uh -huh. worked for MK Ultra, like. Uh, um, Dr. Jollyon West of UCLA and Dr. Ewan Cameron of the Allen Research Institute at the University of Toronto. Uh, these are the people that, you know, who, who were paid by CIA funds and uh, made the great breakthroughs in terms of breaking down the mind, reconstituting it along lines uh, of, the, of the elite that, that would be useful to the elite. But they don't respect their own peers, like Dr. Joseph Sharp, who was the first guy who had voiced a skull done his, in his own laboratory. Dr. Puharik was putting chips in people's teeth and making sound in deaf people's heads. There is so much evidence of this. If you look at patent number 2,995,663, or patent number 3,951,134, and I got those numbers right, that's what he said. Uh -huh. There is so much evidence that the government is involved in this black op crap that the CIA and NSA are running these black ops, these SAP programs. Moderator breaks in, you've done your homework. Then Roger Tolsey's the private investigator, with his website being bugsweep.com, says he's right on. Michael Bell, who wrote the book Invisible Crime and his website invisiblecrime.com. Yeah, I couldn't have put it any better. This gentleman knows what he's talking about. And then the moderator, it's amazing how they single people out and then just go for it. Michael, do you know why you were targeted? And Michael goes through it and says, no, I can't figure it out. Because I just wrote screenplays with the, uh, you know, in Hollywood and most of them were comedies. Uh, and then Ro Roger Tolsey's the private investigator, comes back with this. And this, I think, is the, the crux. When you are doing a weapon system development, it's all statistics. Because basically, you need to have the bodies. When you're doing a statistical program where you're developing mind control stuff, you need thousands of people. And then the results of the experiments are all statistically put together, put through supercomputers and algorithms, that are made, that are fired off the satellites and fired off the cell towers. And that's how this whole thing goes together. Just think of it as supercomputers processing thousands of experiments and just crushing the, crunching the numbers on the other side of it and coming up with weapons systems. And that kind of nails it. And then Michelle calls in from Manitou, you just answered everything that I've been going through alone <laughs> in the interview. Uh, so, uh, we're dealing with uh, weapon systems, we're dealing with, I think, and John Hall, the doctor from San Antonio, would agree that this is a continuation of MKUltra. In other words, MKUltra, they had hearings in the mid-70s where the Church Committee and the Rockefeller Committee condemned the secret CIA programs. The CIA said, oh, we'll stop doing that. Oh, sure. Well, what they, 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 what they did is they took, in the mid-70s, they took these mind control experiments out of the hospitals and the military bases and the uh, prisons where they had been functioning for the last 20 years, and then they went into the cults. Yeah. So this is a cult connection, you know, like uh, Jonestown, uh, People's Temple of, of, uh, of, uh, of Jonestown in Guyana, and many other examples. And now... 
it's out in the domestic population. So the MK Ultra experiments are going on now through the organized gang stalking. Now all of them are not organized, are not MK Ultra experiments, although that's a big part of it. Uh, corporations, uh, individuals, the mob, organized crime can use these technologies, and I think they have agreements with the NSA and the CIA and Homeland Security and whatnot. Okay, you can go ahead and do what you want, but give us the data. You can. You can be part of our great big experiment here Jeez. and go ahead and kill anybody you want because what these are basically is what they called in the, in the 50s and 60s, terminal experiments. Experiments that can go up to including death. Yeah. And that is the goal. Um, if, if we go back to another one of these good sources, there's a, a, another private investigator named David Arthur Lawson who wrote a book called Terrorist Stalking in America, which you can't get now on Amazon or I think anywhere else. Mm -hmm. but, but basically on the front of that book, he, he's got one, two, three, four. Number one, identify. Number two, vilify, which means, of course, discredit right. and insult. And that's, of course, they lie about these targeted individuals to all the perpetrators and the community to get the community spying on these TIs. Right. Uh, and then number three, nullify. And number four, destroy. Whoa. So this is a system of destroying an individual. And, and the Stasi in East Germany, they, they had a name for it, a long German name, which I can't pronounce. But, but it, it translated to degradation, erosion. So you're psychologically eroding and destroying this individual with all the latest tricks, with all the psychological tricks Jeez. that they developed in MKUltra and these other programs. So this, I think, is where we're at. I think we've got a shadow government uh, run by intelligence agencies that, of course, answer to the you know secret societies and the and the ruling elite that runs Wall Street and the City of London, etc., and that has that created communism and Nazism. We go back to that interview we did sure. with Dulles. Uh, Dulles being a, a you know agent provocateur of the Illuminati extraordinaire, uh, who not only founded the CFR back in was a co-founder in 1921, but also probably one of the major players in the Kennedy assassination in 1963. Sure. So he had half a century of subverting and also setting up the stage for World War II by going over to visit Hitler in 1933 with his brother John Foster Dulles and, and getting Hitler to guarantee that he would pay back the Wall Street loans. And at that point Wall Street said, okay, well let's go ahead and build up this Nazi war machine. So. Uh, so what we have then is, is Dulles being perhaps one of the greatest traitors in American history because he set up the war that killed maybe 60 or 70 million people and certainly hundreds of thousands of Americans. Um, and this, this is the man, Alan Dulles, who bragged that he controlled uh, uh, President Dwight D. Eisenhower. Right. Well, he did control Dwight D. He and his brother controlled the president. Sure. So this is what we've got. We've got, a, we've got presidents controlled by intelligence agencies ever since, probably going back before that. And then this gang stalking thing being the modern version of the, mind, the very, very diabolical mind control program by which the civilian population and dissidents uh -huh. and people who don't go along with the program and anybody else they don't like can be covertly uh, eliminated, destroyed. Um, very difficult to get out of this program, they say, once you're in it. It usually starts with overt harassment, uh, and usually you're in the program for a couple years before you even notice that. You say, well, what's going on? It usually starts real small, and then it gets more and more in your face, and you become sensitized to the fact that people all, all around you are you know, doing these strange things, you know, making uh, faces at you and, and uh, you know, disrespecting you and saying, you know, crazy things, often mimicking uh, phone conversations that you might have just had. That's how much, you know, they, they surveil you. And uh, then the, the target gets to the point where they don't trust anybody. Sure. Um, and then, I guess, as it moves along, then the electronic weapons kick in. Uh, the voices in the skull. Not to everybody. It's always a, everybody's got an individual protocol, because the first step would be surveillance. 
and they would have done a psychological profile on the on the individual so they would tailor make but meanwhile the other side of that would be the perpetrating network thousands and thousands of people across the country and the world and uh, so let's say uh, Joe Schmo is is uh, harassed uh, and uh, targeted in Crestone Colorado he thinks he's going crazy well I'm gonna move to Maine well the perpetrating group in Crestone stays in Crestone but all they got to do is get on their cell phone and right. and uh, now they let him know so within a week or two the same kind of harassment is set up for him in Maine with that group right and so that's how extensive and how much money is is involved in this uh, here let me just uh, quote David Lawson this private investigator from Florida who wrote uh, terrorist stalking in America when I rode with the group and he rode with some he was on both sides of it but he was he, he studied it for 12 years when I rode with the group in Niagara Falls Buffalo New York we would seamlessly hook up with Canadians when we crossed the border and they would ride with a stateside occasionally so in other words you know you've got this network of perpetrators and of course they're all uh, informed and cued in with their cell phones and their iPads Jeez. and uh, as I mentioned to you last time, I think I've been on the <clears throat> end of uh, gang stalking as well. And and many times when people do something weird, you know, like, uh, you know, kind of uh, tailgate me and, and I'll stop and then they'll stop and <laughs> they'll keep tailgating me, you know. Right. Uh, and then I, usually I sometimes I'll just go up to them, you know, and I'll see that they're talking to somebody on a cell phone. Well, that's no proof because a lot of people talk right. on cell phones. Right. But, but you also see people with their iPads, you know. So, so there is this cell tower satellite system of communication which allows this whole thing to uh, to uh, uh, and, and let me just say another thing and that is that uh, again uh, Nick Begich from Alaska good, good source his his interviews uh, what we have had is what the US Army College calls a revolution in military affairs yeah. RMA okay RMA um, it's like you know when the gun came along, the sword wasn't such, right. wasn't the top dog right. anymore. It's like that scene from Raiders of the Lost Ark, you know, when uh, Harrison Ford uh, is, is this great big Arab guy comes with his great big saber, right. and Harrison Ford just kind of shrugs, pulls out his gun, and shoots it, you know. Yeah. And 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 now electronic weapons have have almost uh, made obsolete the, the men on the battlefields right. you know, with the big guns. So now it all can be done with satellite uh, uh, directed energy weapons. And so what we have is we have a new world in terms of uh, um, our military planning, uh, our military strategy. And uh, again, if we want to understand this thing, the best way to do it is to look at the history of these programs going back through the Soviet Union and further. Uh, look at the history of the patents, the uh -huh. technologies, uh, and see how much work has been done in this country and how much of it came from the Nazis, how much of it came from the Soviets, how much of it... So you have this international cabal now that has been kind of playing this little puppet show with the nations, you know. Right. Uh, but uh, meanwhile, they have their goal of one world government, one world religion, and this is... Um, this organized stocking thing is a huge weapon that they can use to neutralize uh, individuals that, that don't go along with the program or anybody that they don't like. Wow. So I'll, I'll shut up a little bit, Paul, and, and let uh, well, hear from you and what you, uh, where you think we ought to take this discussion. Well, I was totally amazed and I, I went, I jumped right to where you ended up about 15 minutes ago thinking about the folly of conventional warfare now. I mean, when you can go into Iraq, and I think it was the Royal Guard that they attacked with Voice the Skull, they might have even used holographic technology, which they have also. So this whole charade of uh, Syrian war and the Russian war, the nuclear war with Russia, you know, is what do you think? Do you think that's a sham? Do you think it's a it's a ploy to get money to the the military industrial complex, or what's your what's your what's your best guess on that one? 
Well, that's a very good and difficult question. Um, you know, uh, there's so many elements to this. Um, I, I have to write or tell you what I what I wrote in an email to a friend, you know, who wrote me a thing about, you know, the potential for nuclear war right now, which, according to many sources, including Alex Jones, is maybe higher than it's ever been. Because the United States has all its bases around right. Russia. There's that little cartoon, you know, why did Russia put its country so, so right. close to all the our military bases. bases, you know, right around Russia. And so we're hemming in Russia and China, and it's, you know, old, old-fashioned geopolitics, uh, great game type stuff, you know, uh -huh. the, the contest for Eurasia. Uh, and, you know, two-thirds of the world's resources in, and two-thirds of the world's population in Eurasia. And that, you know, that gets back to the big new Brzezinski and the, you know, uh, between two ages, uh, you know, America and the technotronic age, which he wrote back in the 70s, um, which all that stuff came true. So either he was a, you know, a, a prophet or else he had the game plan in his hand. Right. I, I do, th and what I wrote back, you know, when this guy talked about how dangerous it is, that I said, well, I lived, you know, through the Cuban Missile Crisis, and uh, I know in the USS Liberty, uh, incident in 1967 when President Johnson was was uh, there, uh, there was a real potential for nuclear war. In fact, that was, <laughs> according to some, that was the plan right. uh, that this was going to be the the, the trigger. Uh, it didn't happen. So yeah, we've been we've had had this sort of Damocles, you know, of the nuclear uh, holocaust uh, all our lives. You know, which of course creates a lot of fear, just like the global warming thing, just right, like 911, right. just like all the shooters. I mean, this is how the governments maintain their, you know, keeping the people docile and afraid. I, I, I tend to think that the nuclear threat is still there and, uh, you know, it's the total wild card. But yes, it can be used. And, and we talked last time when we talked about all the drills that were done on 911 by the U.S. Air Force that simulated all aspects right. of this terrorist event and then went live on the actual day uh, and NATO was involved and all these local agencies were involved. Uh, this this whole thing uh, also was accompanied by uh, some nuclear brinksmanship as well with messages going to the Soviet Union, you know, that uh, they, 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 you know there was a wild man in, you know, in the, in the, in the bunker at uh, uh, Right here in Colorado at NORAD, you know, who had his finger on the button oh, and, you know, geez. watch out. Right. So so then Russia would have been put on high nuclear alert on the morning uh -huh. of 9-11, 2001. Well, are we there again? You know, you listen to Alex Jones, you know, the world's going to end next week with this. Yeah. Uh, and I have listened to him some. He's quite, quite an infotainer, uh, but a lot of interesting info, too. Um, <laughs> I so, have a couple problems with Alex. Yeah. One is he's bought into this election fraud, right. and two, he doesn't seem to care whether he differentiates between obviously false flag attacks and Islam. He'll always point to these false flags that have been debunked as false flags as, oh, this is, we got to get those Muslims. And I, I, I understand that's a dangerous religion, and I think it's a strange collection of ideas, but if he would separate them, you know, like this is a CIA Islam thing. We know this because da 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 da. I'd give him more credibility. But anyway, I don't want to get off on Alex Jones. No, no, no I think I think that's a very good point. Um, yeah, Alex has become kind of a, a propagandist for the Republican Party. Absolutely. Strangely enough, mm -hmm. and and he's more or less taken up where Fox left off, which is the strangest of all. Of Isn't all that? Switches, yes. You know, because he's coming at it from a different angle, but he's also doing propaganda for the Republican Party. But going back to your very important question, um, you know, is have nuclear weapons now been replaced? By directed energy weapons. Right. Well, I have to go back to my 911nwo.com site because there's three main um, hypotheses, you might say, for what took down the World Trade Center. Uh -huh. One of them, of course, which the one I think is easiest to debunk, is that it's uh, nanothermite, you know, and that they planted this nanothermite all over the building. And Dr. Steve Jones, who's, you know, Brigham Young uh, professor of physics, but who also has lots of connections with the uh, mm -hmm. Lawrence Livermore lab and all these, you know, government things. He's proposed that. Well, I think that's not a very good theory, <clears throat> but two viable theories, I think, 
are certainly there were some in the building bombs, but a lot of these bombs, some of these bombs could have been mini nukes. Yeah. Um, and I think there's very good uh, evidence for that. And I think there's very good evidence also by Dr. Judy Wood, another physicist, uh, that their directed energy weapons were also used. Or, right. you know, so what, what the exact mix was is difficult to know because the military is, you know, 60 years ahead of us and, and they can fool us. And they do fool us all the time with their right. high-tech stuff. And, you know, if you don't understand the technology, it's like magic. And so right. what happened on that day was like magic. These, these two huge buildings, some of the most, the strongest, sturdiest buildings that had ever been built up right. to that point, built by the Rockefeller brothers, uh, David and, and Nelson, by the way. Uh, I think it was 33 called, years before. Exactly. Yeah, 1976. And, and they, was, sometimes they were, they were called, the Twin Towers were called the, the Towers of, of, uh, of the Masons, you know, Boaz and yeah. whichever. Uh, yeah. Jacob. So basically, yeah. J Jacob and Boaz, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, so basically, and a lot of people they say, well, they were built for this to happen. You know, this was all scripted even in the 70s. Right. But, uh, and I think that's a real possibility, knowing who the Rockefellers are and what their connections are with all of this. Well, the 33 is a significant number for the uh, for the Freemasons because it's the highest Absolutely. degrees. And so 33 years later, yeah, oh. you take them out. Yeah. So if you want to get into the cult, uh, cult stuff, you really can. Yeah, you can go down the road. Yeah. I, I usually don't, but uh, some people really get into that. Yeah. Uh, because that, that is how the Illuminati thinks, you know. So yeah. it's not a, not a bad rabbit hole to jump into right. if you have the have the energy for it I don't <laughs> but but uh, but yeah um, they're all into that numerology geometry of stuff and and occultic symbols and and uh, yeah we're dealing with cult stuff we're dealing with demonic stuff but uh, you know so again going back to the Trade Center okay was it many nukes was it directed at energy weapons well that puts us on the cusp of this revolution in military affairs yeah you know um, could be both and I, I tend to think it is both um, and I tend to think that the nuclear threat is still real uh, right. because we've got thousands, maybe 6,000 strategic nuclear warheads and Russia has at least that many. That's even after all the downsizing from, you know, the right. 80s and 90s when, in which we had about forty or 50,000 each. Uh, so now we can only blow up the world, you know, <laughs> a thousand times over right. where it could be, you know, a hundred thousand times that's over. Right. <laughs> but anyway, so yeah, that's out there. Um, but I think you're probably right. It's probably being used as a terrorist uh, threat, in yeah. other words, to terrorize the people. Just like terrorism, you know, the, the right. threat of, of uh, you know, I mean, it, it, I was having, uh, I visited my mother in an assisted living place and we were watching the news. And, and, and it was one of those moments in the campaign trail, you know, where, you know, so and so was running for the Republicans, and so and so is running for the Democrats, and all of a sudden, you know, the news takes you over to France, where there's been this latest terrorist event. You know, mm -hmm. and uh, of course, all the candidates have to weigh in on that. Well, we've got to do more for national security. Yeah, that's security, right. Blah, blah 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 blah. You know, so that that then uh, completely kind of co-ops the 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 debate between all the right. candidates. And my mom's no dummy. She was a academic uh, sociology professor all her life, you know, yeah. and, I, and I just said, well, give me a break. That's the That's CIA right. and Mossad doing another, you know, false flag terrorist thing, you know. She, you, she, you, she didn't want to go there, you know, oh. but she knew I was right, you yeah. know. And, you know, so there's the, you watch the, the tension in her, you know, don't, you know, I just want to go watch the news, you know. That's right. <laughs> That's a middle America, you know. So I just want to believe what I'm watching on the TV. Don't tell me the rest of the story. I you know, know, I know. That's so horrible. I can I can put myself in her shoes and see what she's going through to see this big change. Sociology professor, I mean, she's got to really, really oh, see the changes. Amazing. Yeah. So so anyway, yeah, I think your question's a good one. We can only speculate. Yeah. Um, where else do you think we should go with this? Well, I, I know that uh, just in terms of magic and the way they do war now, wasn't didn't Judy Wood identify the fact that there was a hurricane off the coast of New York while this was going and it could be tapped somehow? Absolutely, very good point. Um, and I do bring this up on my website. Um, 
Yeah, she's got a book, Where Where Did the Towers Go? This is the lady yeah. whose PhD is in optical interferometry <laughs> and materials engineering. So she yes. knows, you know, what materials can do. Right. And uh, she looked at all the, what she calls toasted cars and mm -hmm. things that had, had all these field effects in the, in the vicinity uh, that, that are not explained by normal physics. And she, she talked about, she actually developed a new vocabulary for the things that she was seeing she, in, in thousands, tens of thousands of photographs. So her, her analysis was based on looking right. at the photographic record of, of that day. And uh, so she gets into these space photographs and she, she looks, and all of a sudden she sees a Category 4 yeah. <laughs> hurricane, <laughs> Hurricane Aaron, 90 miles off the coast of Manhattan. And the press did not report on it. <laughs> so that tells you the press is totally complicit in all That's this, right. you know. And uh, yeah, she she's saying that the the uh, hurricane is like a gigantic Tesla coil, you know. Yes. You've you've got these 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 things going around, you know, in, right. in opposite directions, and um, enormous amounts of energy. And I've seen subsequent articles. A guy named Andrew uh, Johnson, I think, in in England, has become a cohort of hers and done lots of interviews. And he's got a little uh, YouTube. There is one of these government labs very close to the Ground Zero, uh -huh. and he's and it's in a circular form. And he's suggesting that that energy was concentrated across this circle and pointed directly at the Twin Towers. And he's showing air air photos wow. of this thing from above. I can't remember right now the name of the facility, right. but it is one of these government laboratories that that you know might have been part of the operation because it was a black op. Yeah. What we're looking at is a whole series of black ops and wet ops in the sense that, you know, people are killed. Um, so, yeah. Um, so, again, you know, if we go back to our gang stalking theme, um, it does connect with 911 mm -hmm. if directed energy weapons are being used. And now we've had this revolution in military affairs and terrorism and directed energy weapons and all this uh, mind control stuff, all of this is in the mix. Yes. And that can then, then be brought down upon the populace as a whole, be brought down upon individuals uh, who need to be uh, neutralized or destroyed, right. according to somebody in the power structure. So, uh, yeah, uh, and of course, the, meanwhile, average Joe Schmo, you know, <clears throat> doesn't understand much about directed energy weapons. No, that's right. It's it's really funny how how they've kept us in this almost troglodyte state. Because I remember I did a report a couple months ago on levitation craft. And uh, levitation craft was first shown to the U.S. government successfully. This guy named John Keeley got in to a levitation craft and flew it around and showed it to the military. The military and the government, of course, said we can't, we don't have any use for it. But you know, it went into the black ops. This happened in 1860, Eric. That was <laughs> during, before the Civil War. So, so the motor car took place, uh, roads took place. I mean, all that was built up around the technology that we were given and the technology that we were kept from. I mean, all these rockets. Who needs a rocket when you can levitate, you know? It's, it's amazing because we're, we're kind of kept in a box. Here's what you know, here's what you can see, here's your reality. And well, what you're talking about is outside of this. This is their reality. It's very a different place. Yes, and, and again, anybody who's willing, like this uh, caller to this show, Tom Stern, you know, to do some legwork, uh -huh. <clears throat> can prove. Mm -hmm. That these technologies were, you know, developed in by our own military. Yes. And and by the Nazi psychiatrists who then morphed into the American psychiatrists and the rocket scientists also brought over from the Nazis, the paperclip scientists like Werner von Braun. Um, yeah, and and of course Joseph P. Farrell is on the internet a lot with and mm -hmm. written many books about the Nazi uh, physics, which seems maybe to be based on. Uh, kind of a different physics than, say, the Western Einstein physics, and uh, and of course, uh, as you say, uh, um, 
if indeed much of that physics was brought over and the Nazis then became the basis of NASA mm -hmm. and, and uh, many of our Republican institutions like that right. and the Republican Party, uh, the, the, these, these higher uh, physics technologies uh, uh, that like Tom Bearden talks about, you know, uh, would be kept from the people. Uh, you know, and uh, so then there's this whole parallel history. Right. And this is what we have been trying to explore, and me with the, the, uh, the discussion about Alan Dulles. Uh, I mean, that, that, that's not the official history. That's, but, right. But now we've got that history in 50 or 60 or 70 or 80 books by, by credible researchers. Right. So we have an alternative history now. We also have an alternative physics and science, right. or black physics, black science, which only the elite and the, the military intelligence uh, seem to control. And then, and then guys like me who taught at Cal State University Stanislaus, for the most part, our function is to teach the, 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 the kind of the dumbed down version of things. Right. <laughs> to, to keep the people in, in, you know, think they're learning something about reality when in fact what they're learning is, is uh, the stuff that is non threatening to, uh, or, or goes along with the, you know, objectives of right. the power elite. Yeah, which Tes often gets into propaganda. Right. Tesla said that if we start dealing with more, uh, what experimenting with non-physical science, will make more progress in ten years than they have in the past. And I think that's I think that's really what's happened. They took that non-physical science. Maybe that is their science. Well, this this you brought up the right name. Uh, Nikola Tesla right. is the man who really pioneered this uh, directed energy weapons technology. He had his death ray back in, you know, 1902 or something. Right. Which he said, you know, could destroy, uh, and, and not only destroy, but disappear an air, uh, a big airplane engine, you know, at a distance of 200 miles. Wow. And, and uh, I think that, you know, his death ray may have morphed in some ways to what we saw on, on September 11th, you know, the, the downing of the World Trade uh, Centers, you know. So you, you basically, the idea is you, you interfere two different wavelengths of energy within a confined space and then all that interference then causes molecular dissociation, disintegration yeah. and then the, the steel beams and the glass and the concrete just gets dustified wow. and very very fine dust to the point where Judy Wood could see the finest dust just going up into the stratosphere with her with her photos, wow. you know. So um, yeah, it's it defies our modern physics. And then Nikola Tesla was the right word, right name, and so that has been suppressed. And this then became the basis of the revolution in military affairs, and the basis for the really high tech gang stalking, you know, the acoustic weapons, sonic weapons, the microwaves, the laser beams, all these things, which are um, being applied now around the world through satellites and uh, Gwen Towers and uh, cell phone towers, things like that, uh, to uh, uh, non-cooperating individuals or individuals they just want to experiment on. Right. Let's see, let's see what happens, like la lab rats, you know, in a cage. Right. And, and of course, as, as Dr. John Hall says, if they can, through their gang stalking, uh, you know, use of street theater and, and harassing techniques, uh, brighting of headlights and uh, ghosting, uh, where they, they break into your house and move bits of furniture and maybe take one book and then come out. And there's all these, and this is all uh, uh, summarized in an article I just posted called uh, uh, Organized Gang Stalking, What You Need to Know. Um, and they talk about all these techniques. Well, once this has gone on for a few years and the individual then, you know, becomes kind of terrorized and paranoid, right. and if that individual then goes to the police or a psychiatrist and says they're doing this, well these techniques were, were developed in such a way that, that the symptoms this individual would display mimic uh, paranoid schizophrenia sure, and, and delusional disorder. So then the police and or the psychiatrist can say, okay, well this person is mentally ill and put him in a hospital, give him drugs, you know, and, and take him out that way. Um, so, uh, but, but usually that's stage one, and then stage two, once they get the individual, if they don't get him, say, locked up, uh, they get him paranoid enough where he just stays in his home, or she. Right. And, and then, like Dr. John Hall said, it's like you have a, a rat in a cage, you know, a lab rat in a cage, because then they can zap you. 
right. the satellite and the and the uh, um, cell phone tower uh, radiation and things like that. You know, the ELFs and whatnot. Right. Uh, the Tesla technology. And uh, again, this stuff. All the patents are, you know, on record, and it goes back uh, many, many decades. The voice to skull, sure, things like that. Um, uh, so yeah, this is this is a formidable weapons system that can be used on the battlefield, can be used uh, against individuals, uh, can take out anybody. Uh, that's the goal, and that's you know, and of course, if they're still experimenting. They're still learning. They're fine-tuning it. Right. And and Doc and Julianne McKinney, who wrote this article in 1994, said, "Well, we'd better turn this around. This could become the basis for a global holocaust. As you can you can kill everybody with this thing." Right. But they they don't seem to be doing that. You know, they could they could ramp up the the cell towers enough to probably wipe us out. I, I want to move move to a kind of kind of into solutions. Yeah, fear, fear seems to be the pivotal pivotal area. And I remember way back when Jade Helm was was hot was a hot topic. There was a woman that came on and she she gave a real comprehensive interview about Jade Helm and she was so incredibly bright. I think her first name was D, and she's got a website. I think it's nine one one news, something like that. DJ. But anyway, she used the initials D. DJ was 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 the initials that she used. And she would, she talked about how uh, AI was connected to the battlefield and how uh, what Jade Helm was doing was setting up kind of an operation so that uh, you know they, the AI knows the objective and uh, as you as you make as the troops make their move on the battlefield uh, the AI is watching it and getting feedback so that they can change directions to make it make it more effective and it's an AI uh, interface that with Jade Helm that they were setting up for Jade Helm but she said at the end of the interview that the whole thing depends on fear and I think the reason is because when people are under fear they're real predictable they they they're in their left brain they're gonna do something that's uh, kind of like I've got you know if this is over here I'm gonna run if you do something that's unpredictable like if you can get out of your fear and actually rationally uh, kind of make moves against it, uh, that might be the best strategy for defeating this thing. But how do you think that, does anybody talk about uh, fear abatement or, or that in these books as, as a defense tactic? Yes. Um you brought up two excellent points. Um, you talked about the AI, the artificial intelligence of Jade Helm, and and I think that <clears throat> connects with the gang stalking. Remember what uh, uh, Roger Tulsa said about the, uh, you know, the supercomputer. Mm -hmm. Well, we have this Utah Data Center now, supposedly with a million square feet of, of supercomputers, you know, which which now connect, you know, and then we've got these seventy eight. Uh, 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 Department of Homeland Security fusion centers, which you know fuse all this intelligence yeah. with local and, and CIA, and, and uh, so they're they're collecting all our emails, all our phone conversations, and all this stuff is stored. And uh, so, yeah, we become the ultimate surveillance society, and, and more because they they have these weapons systems in place, like organized gang stalking, to take out uh, anyone that they they want to take out, but. Um, yeah, Nick Begich does talk about the fear aspect a lot, and he's very good. He's on harp. He's on on the harp issue in Alaska, um, and he says when you're in fear, you're you're not you're not you're not your highest self at all, right. and you are much easier to control. And he says he's been working on this harp thing for a long time, uh, but what he notices in himself when he goes into when he starts to go into that fear mode. He just pulls back and stops. He's right. like, okay, I can't, I can't be effective anymore. Right. Uh, so I think you have an excellent point there. I think they do want to keep us in fear. That is the easiest form of propaganda to control people. Right. And and of course, if we look back at our lives, we see all the examples. You know, the Cuban Missile Crisis on forward. Right. You know, the nuclear sort of Damocles, all this stuff yes. um, that we all lived with all our lives. Well, when I was in elementary. Probably, 
I, when that I was wasn't in, funny at the time. Yeah. No, it really wasn't. I, I can remember I, when I was in elementary school, and you, I'm sure you went underwent yeah. this. They would we would have drills where we would jump under the desk. Now you know that was that desk is not going to help at all. <laughs> yep. But but it it's a fear conditioning it's, tactic. Think think about nukes and you know you are under cover. Duck and cover. cover. That's hands. what it was. And we'd have this bell. You know, That's right. Cover. And yeah, I mean, these little seven year old kids, you know, uh, of course they're going to, fear is going to be instilled. And, and that apparently is the goal. Um, but yeah, uh, speaking from my own experience, uh, what little I've had, and I haven't been targeted with the voice to skull or anything like that, thank God, so far. But. Uh, uh, certainly, there have been uh, street uh, incidents and street right. harassment, and I've, I've gotten pretty good at distinguishing, you know, who right. the harassers are and, and how they operate. Although they generally fool you because they have so many different kinds of setups. For right. Them. And uh, but every once in a while, I get an aha moment, and I realize just what's happening at the moment, and then I'll just break out into a great big grin. And sometimes I'll go right up to these guys and I'll give them a bumper sticker. You know, this is fightgangstalking.com. <laughs> or I'll give them some literature. Right. You know, I'll talk to them about gang stalking. Right. Ask them if they're a terrorist, you know, right. because gang stalking is terrorism. Right. And, of course, that's one of the ways that the perps are, are conditioned uh, and fooled into, into gang stalking you. Is they're told that you're, you know, some terrorist. You're bad. Or pedophile or something. You're bad. All these lies, right. you know. And... Uh, a lot of these people are fairly low life uh, people. Well, let's say, let's say uh, you can call them trailer trash, you can call them criminals, you can just say they're poor, or need some money. Because right. there is money changing hands in this. And if they can kill you, they will get your money out of your bank accounts and things like that. So some people think it's also a money making operation, bottom line. And right. that would be why the mafia and organized crime is involved in this. They're making right. money off this thing. So it's a it's a dual per it's a multi-purpose uh, operation, um, and when you start to see, like like this guy Michael F. Bell in this interview on Coast to Coast, an excellent interview, who who wrote the book Invisible Crime, he said once he realized that it was technology, right, all of a sudden he it, things became much easier for him, right, so once he understood. And uh, then he met, he sought out this guy, Roger Tulsis, who's a private investigator who's, who's helped three or four thousand of these targeted individuals. And Tolstis is an expert at what they call shielding. And he can help you, Ooh. you know, with a, with a uh, nickel copper kind of a plating cage that will, you know, uh, intercept 80% of the incoming directed energy weapons, microwaves, whatever. Faraday cage. Sure. I don't know if it's, it's a Faraday, Faraday cave. Maybe it's a Faraday cave. I really haven't gone into that much. But then the, the second kind is it kind of puts you in, in, a, in a separate electrical field, the little egg of electrical, which keeps uh -huh. out the incoming. But anyway, so there are people out there. You can go on the Internet, apparently, to learn about these kinds of shielding. Um, the, I've read different things about the Faraday cage. Some people say everything dies inside the Faraday cage. <laughs> Faraday cage. I mean, I you know, so... Uh, I'm no expert on that. Me neither. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, shielding is possible. And once you understand the system, um, a lot of the fear is gone. Right. And, and so that's a very good point. And I think the best way to remove the fear is to have this kind of understanding, which is, you know, hopefully we're, we're doing right now. We're, we're increasing that. What about support groups? Have you ever heard of a support group for... Uh, absolutely. Dr. John Hall talks about this. Um, there is a group, uh, several groups that have, uh, you know, a thousand or more members. Freedom from surveillance and electronic harassment or something like cool. that is one of them. I can, let's see if I can find the actual. Um, and then I, there was an international conference on covert harassment of civilians in 2015 in Berlin, Germany, that had a lot of these people talking. Um, uh, a very good point about the support groups. Let's see if I can find uh, more information about that. There it is. Yeah, it's called uh, Freedom from Covert Surveillance and Harassment. Um, and 
There are several other similar groups uh, where uh, people um, come together, share their stories. Uh, Dr. John Hall said these people can't all be suffering from delusional disorder because delusional disorder has only about 0.03% of the population. And uh, the people that are, you know, victims of these uh, gang stalking operations, they don't respond to the same kind of drugs that the actual mentally ill do respond right. to. Also, uh, paranoid schizophrenia. Schizophrenia, he says, and he's a doctor, uh, normally has its roots, you know, in the teenage years. And uh, f for, for the people that are being falsely diagnosed with schizophrenia, um, this, this comes at any time in their lives and does not, again, respond to the same uh, kind of treatment or a drug treatment as, as real schizophrenics. So, um, yeah, um, uh, the technical part of this is, is going to be difficult for people to understand, but again, by listening to Dr. John Hall, who's written a couple books, by listening to uh, uh, Roger Tulsis on interviews, by listening to Julian McKinney, by listening to Dr. Nick Begich, uh, these would be the experts on the technology. And then, yeah, go out and listen to all kinds of the experiences of the TIs because there's a lot of, right. there's a lot of uh, wisdom and, and knowledge there. But uh, I would suggest that uh, TIs, um, as soon as they can, you know, kind of stop what they're doing and understand, try to get this big picture. Um, and then they will probably be able to turn a corner. I think, right. um, like Michael F. Bell did when he understood, uh, Michael F. Bell had, had consulted Roger uh, Tulsis, so he had that benefit of that expert helping him, this private investigator in L.A., uh, but uh, people can do it now on the Internet, and that's what's so strange about this whole thing, that uh, I could buy books on Amazon.com that tell me all about this thing, right? Uh, and I can go on the Internet and learn about it, and then I can go out on the you know, in the world and see it. Right. <laughs> and, and you know that government perpetrators would probably love it if you tried to do something like fear abatement, because this would be just part of their compiling for their studies. You know, here's what this group did, and how can we get around it? You know, it's all a study. It's all well, that's, uh, data. That's, yeah, that is the perspective that I, I think two perspectives that hopefully have come out of our discussion today. Uh, the, the insight from, uh, from Tulsis, uh, the private investigator in L.A., uh, that this is a weapon system. And the insight from McKinney, Tulsis, and Dr. John Hall, and others, I'm sure, uh, that this is uh, an experiment and that it's a continuation of the MK Ultra experiments. Right. And so to understand this really helps to go back to the MK Ultra. Uh, information. Right. And again, now I'm starting to feel like my 911nwo.com website uh, it really has a pretty good, that's a huge site, but it, it provides a lot of information which is good background for understanding this. Uh, and I, that didn't happen intentionally so because I was investigating things kind of as they came up to my attention. Right. And then what I've learned, what I've learned in, about gang stalking has been really the most recent. Uh, investigation that I've done, uh, partly forced upon me <laughs> by, by circumstance, right. you know, by the fact that I, I seem to be enrolled in this in this wonderful experiment. And your point <laughs> is excellent. That that uh, yeah, you know, they they really can't lose in the sense that uh, now I can also say that living in Crestone Baca, where we have all these cults, right. I think there's other experiments going on too. And I and I think that uh, some of the suicides around here. And some of the people that have left this town, this might explain. Mm -hmm. So, in other words, we're talking about pretty dark stuff. You and I are trying to make light of it, but if if this stuff is driving people to the edge and they're killing themselves, right? And if this people, this is these programs are driving people to the edge and they're moving out of town, this is a weapon. This is a weapon system. So, right. yes, it's an experiment. Yes, it's a weapon. And right. meanwhile, we've got this image of a peace, love, spiritual community, right. you know, which happens to be crawling with agents, as far as I can tell. Right. Change well, agents, spies, whatever you want to call. It. Yeah, it's it's it's. This is not a pretty picture, you know. Well, I talked about two different uh, concurrent um, existence 
our little box existence where they're giving us things from the mainstream media. Here's the current technology. You have to use oil. Da 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 da. -da. And uh, here's the the world they live in. And in order for us to, I think, deal with them, we have to uh, know their world. Uh, last week, or I guess it was earlier this week, we did an interview about uh, how they've used uh, the corruption of sex to, uh, you know, move society into the and cultural Marxism to move society into the degenerated state that it's in. And it was ugly. It's an ugly topic. And halfway through the interview, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really um, sick of it. But you really have to look at it. And I would suggest anybody that's uh, watching World Beyond Beliefs, go back and watch Eric's, um, uh, how can I say, his evolution into this. Uh, how he's gone over the 911, got very deep into the 911, then went into Alan Dulles and found out what a satanic monster this guy was. Uh, he was the first director of the CIA, wasn't he? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and, and, and kind of follow our evolution as we discover more and more things about this, the real world we live in. Because without knowing about this world, we're victimized by it. Yeah. Um, you know, Patrick Henry said, uh, uh, for my part, whatever anguish of spirit it might cost, I'm willing to know the whole truth, Yeah. to know the worst and to provide for it. Um, so it becomes so easy for the vast majority, and, and I hope we're talking to them too at some point, um, the vast majority of people who are, you know, nose to the grindstone, put food on the table, keep your eight to five job or whatever circumstance. Right. Uh, um, there's a fear barrier. You don't want to go into these subjects because it might, you know, it might uh, uh, cause repercussions in your life. And I'd right. say most of my family's in that position. You know, they're all very highly functioning within their spheres, but they're not going right. to get these bigger issues because. Uh, you know, then it might upset the apple cart, might right. make them feel bad, uh, might actually bring on, there's a kind of a subconscious feeling that it might bring on danger. You know? Right. So, so you have all these kind of psychological walls that have been built up. Uh, but uh, meanwhile, you got your head in the sand and which part of your anatomy is exposed? I right. Mean, you, you, are, you are, you know, you're fish in a barrel. Right. For, for the ruling elite with all these technologies. Uh, and it, unless you, you know, start to wake up, um, well, Albert Einstein said something like that. He said, the world is a dangerous place to live, not because of the people who are evil, which I disagree with, right. but because of people who don't do anything about it. Right. So, you know, Edmund Burke uh, uh, said, said the same thing, basically, you know, uh, uh, that we're, uh, well, what's the quote with Burke? Uh, um, uh, it'll come to me in a second. But, uh, yeah, so we're living in a surveillance state. We're living in an increasing totalitarian state, very much like the old Soviet Union, only with, or, or even the Nazis, but with a, with a veneer of democracy upon it. Right. But we're well down that road towards uh, FEMA camps and uh, Jade Helm operations. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, we have a constitution which our government doesn't seem to pay much attention to, <laughs> no. but, but we still have it, you know, and, and uh, so if the people could, you know, kind of uh, uh, use it, right. use their freedom of speech, use their freedom of assembly, push back. Right. Uh, that's, I think, our best strategy is to push back as hard as we can with the truth, um, because we know that the truth is the greatest enemy of the state. We know there's going to be right. some repercussions. Uh, but um, that's what living in America in a democracy and in the world now as we're globalized, um, you know, that's citizen responsibility. That's, that's the idea right. that citizens own the government. And right. now we've polluted that so much. I mean, even, even Trump had a great quote. Let's see if I can find it here. Uh, um, 
at that uh, in his acceptance speech, which is very, uh, very germane here. The most basic duty of government is to defend the lives of its own citizens. Any government that fails to do so is a government unworthy to lead. It is finally time for a straightforward assessment of the state of our nation. Wow. Yeah. That is the purpose of government, if you go back to the Declaration and the Constitution. Right. The, the life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness right. of the citizens. And, and it's the citizens who empower, and, and the citizens who, who, you know, get their rights not from government but from God. So, right. so the, the, the hierarchy is God, individuals, and then government. And then the government is, is divided up according to our Constitution. Local government is most powerful, state government and federal government least powerful. Well, they've turned that whole thing upside yes. down. Yeah. So now that the federal government is on the top, and we get the federalization of all the local governments by all this grant money, right. by Department of Homeland Security and stuff like that, you know, enticements. And, and then the, the individuals at the bottom, and then God's not on the map at all. Right. So what we have done is we perverted this by some very power-hungry, um, psychopathic individuals, and, you know, we've talked about that. Uh, but people need to, to try to turn that around taking power back, realizing that, you know, that we are God's creation and that government is our creation. Right. And there's, I think it, I think it goes, well, this, I think this particular d discussion of gang stalking is critical because first of all, it educates people. Uh, second of all, it can help them get together and talk about it. Uh, Third of all, I think just putting a, a cap on it, here's, this is gang stalking. And if you're seeing any of these things, this is what's happening to you. So you, so you can um, do something about it. First of all, get out of fear. I think you're getting out of the car and confronting people is, that, that's the way to go with this thing. Um, so in this particular instance, uh, for you and people who are in this situation, it's time. It seems like a time release thing. It was funny. This week we we produced a, a video on uh, pedophilia because pedophilia, of course, is being integrated into society through a lot of the religions and uh, through the American Psychological Association and DSM, uh, who are uh, making it a preference. It's it's becoming a preference, and it's. It really threatens the core of Western society. Well, it sat on the internet for a long time. It got, I don't know, I don't know how many views, but uh, now it's hot. And it gets got 8,000 views in the last two days. This is time. And the same is, same with the gang stalking or any of these things. As, you know, we're not waking up uniformly together. We're waking up one at a time and and in different ways, and we've got to make sure not to war with one another and, and unite together. But it seems like a time release thing, and putting um, educational packages out like the ones that we've done with you over the last uh, probably six months are, they're like things that when you're ready for them, they're there, they're comprehensive, they're well researched and well articulated and uh, generally when Dr. Carlson's involved there's there's a positive silver lining there there's there's a way out now that you see what's happening you can avoid them now that you know that John and uh, Alan Doug, Douglas Dulles aren't heroes that they're dark occultists um, you're starting to wake up to the reality of the way the world the way it is, not the world the way the mainstream media and your education system has taught you to be, and that's that's the value here, Eric. Yeah, I agree, and I I, I have the same kind of motivation with my websites. I, I look at my uh, 911 and my natural climate websites as kind of digital libraries. Right. So that it's a resource for people who want it and need it. Right. Now I'm not, you know, I'm just at the point, you know, as a webmaster uh, of trying to figure out, well, how do I, you know, uh, get more hits? You know, how do right. I do the search engine optimization thing? Well, that's expensive too. Right. Know? I think your strategy right now of having these interviews 
probably is more effective in the sense of you know reaching people from all walks of life quickly right. uh, I like to think that in maybe the long term my approach also has value in the sense that this resource of all these articles you know which might include some references right. to YouTube is is also valuable you know and perhaps as we go into more of a, a police state intelligence state uh, censorship mode right um, but burning even is considerable, you know, cons uh, possible. Um, and, of course, the Internet itself is, is uh, you know, not invulnerable. But, uh, yeah, we're, we're just trying to educate people right. with, with uh, a, a, the truth, I hope. And, uh, I hope. and uh, you know, I, I, think, I think we're, uh, I think there's an enormous upswelling in the country. I mean, mm -hmm. and uh, guys like Alex Jones, who we brought up earlier, you know what Lenin said? He said the best way to control the opposition is to lead it. Right. Well, I, you know, I think there's a good chance, uh, as uh, as Christopher Story said in his book about the new one world underworld order, that you know Alex Jones's websites are one of many many CIA front right. websites. In other words, uh, control the opposition. You know, get lots of ranting and raving, and you know, talk about how you're you're you know you're you're challenging government, but make it a limited hangout. Right. In other words, we'll admit to this, but we're not going <clears> to <throat> go there. We won't go there. We're exactly. not going to go there. Well, they do go to a lot of interesting places, but you have to kind of look at what they're omitting. Right. And uh, and he interviews a lot. I don't want to get off on Alex, but he interviews a lot of CNP members. And the CNP members, well, the CNP is a conservative, it's kind of like the conservative uh, uh, compliment to the CFR oh. and, and most of his interviewees are this conservative CFR it's, it's called a CNP but so I, I you know but I think what we're doing I think uh, we're both sincere we, we don't make money at this uh, right. I think your website you know people don't read this is why we a lot of times what I'll do is I'll, I'll read an article and I'll say well you know I don't know how many thousand people will read this, but if I can put it in a video that somebody can click on and just passively get it, it it, it gets better. And I think that the, that your website is fodder for any filmmaker that really, because you, you've got all the information there. You've done all the research. You've dotted all the I's. I mean, it's a comprehensive web. If you haven't gone there, by the way, uh, Listeners, these it's well worth the trip. All three of these websites are full of uh, information. I love the one on the uh, climate change because there's so much been done on climate change, and uh, Dr. Carlson debunks it. It's a uh, well, yeah, coming from uh, you know somebody who actually went through the academics. Um, getting a master's and a PhD in this field and, and having watched this this huge train, this political global warming fraud come down the tracks and, and watching it, you know, knock my career this way and knock right. my career that way. And, you know, it is my whole career from when I was a graduate student till now uh, has been affected by this politicization and corruption of, of science. And uh, okay, if they can politicize and corrupt that science, you know, they can certainly politicize and corrupt other sciences, like eugenics was just a complete fraud. Right. Uh, Lysenkoism in the Soviet Union was, was totally bogus. Uh, a lot of people starved because of that. Right. It was a bi quote unquote biologist who believed that if you threw more water on the plant, that it was going to make it more nutritious or something, you know. But uh, <laughs> it's just it, it, devoid of any substance. But, but of course, then you get into all the black science stuff, the physics and the, uh, what we talked about earlier, the Tesla stuff. Um, so yes, yeah, science can be corrupted, it can be co-opted, it can be controlled by the powers that be, and it is. It is. And um, it's a sad tale, but true. And again, it's one of those things, you know, when you wake up, you wake up, you see the man behind the curtain, right. you know, it's just a guy with a, you know, an old guy with a beard like us, right. you know, who's, who's, who's uh, fooling you, you know, with knobs and bells and whistles. And uh, you start to see how that process works. Uh, you see behind the curtain, you can never be fooled again in that sense. You just kind of, um, 
look at everything differently. And, and the more people get to that point, right. then I think we would have a responsible populace. Right. Uh, you know, Thomas Jefferson said, you, you can't have a democracy if, you know, if the people are ignorant of the facts. Right. It's just never happened before. It's never going to happen. You know? That's right. That's right. Those, the nation that wants to be independent, free and ignorant, he said, wants what never has been and never can be. Right. And that's where we are now. We have an ignorant um, uh, population that's totally, well, propagandized to a great extent and looking in the wrong directions. Right. They're looking at the, the, the dangers of global warming while it's cooling. Yeah. <laughs> Bottom line. <laughs> right. Exactly. And you, you know, at some point you get tired of being tricked. You know, yeah. you get tricked into World War II, you got tricked into the hippie movements, you get tricked into, now they're, they're tricking kids into this social justice warrior thing, radical, I mean, you get, you get tired of being tricked and you want the truth. And it, it's really not that painful a process. And the people who are waking up, if you ask them if they would go back, I don't think you'll find anybody that wants to go back. I think that uh, it's a more comfortable place to be because you because it's real. Absolutely, yeah. It's uh, it it gives you a chance. Right. You know, if if say you are a victim or a target of gang stalking, and uh, you know you you get all this missing disinformation about it. Right. There's no there's no hope. No way out. No way out. But if you get accurate information, there is hope. And, and I think, uh, um, okay, let's talk about that hope. Mm -hmm. um, we still, in this country, in the United States, we still have a constitution. Mm -hmm. uh, gang stalking is a federal crime, a felony in every state. Mm -hmm. um, it breaks uh, numerous laws. So that means this whole weapon system, this network, which is, you know, uh, run by intelligence agencies and organized crime and even individuals who are rich, it's illegal. Right. Uh, now, these people are so powerful that most of the locals um, and Congress are not going to challenge them because that's the, that's the power structure. But the laws on the books uh, are there, and people like Dr. John Hall are trying to get uh, a Congress to pass laws, for instance, against experimenting on American citizens. What a concept. <laughs> you know, look back at the history of, of our yeah. government and our military experimenting on uh, unwitting, non-consensual American right. citizens. It's, it's quite a sordid history. Right. And obviously it's continuing today with the organized gang stock. Well, if Dr. John Hall and his allies can, can get one or two congressmen to pass a law, and if that were then to get... Um, press coverage same thing with the chemtrails i right. mean all the congressmen you know they just want to look the other way if somebody says gosh you know we have spraying in the sky and right. i doubt that those chemicals are good for people and other living things right. uh, they'll, they'll just say oh gosh you know i have a meeting to go right. to. <laughs> That's right. they, they you know they know about it but they don't want to let on it's right. just the same with organized gang stalking. Everybody knows about it. The judges know about it. The police know about it. The, the congressmen know about it. But the power structure that is controlling it is so powerful. Uh, and the laws are not there. And the public will has not been strong enough right. to push it into uh, a prominent position in, in the topic. Now, Donald Trump's not going to talk about this. Hillary Clinton's not going to talk about this. Uh, so somehow or another, the people have to um, just push and push and push. Right. I mean, the Vietnam War would not have ended when it did, except for the younger generation, which you and I were part of, just, you know, just kept pounding at the doors and saying, right. we don't want this war. So, and, and in fact, uh, much of the gang stalking and, and uh, targeting of individuals who are dissidents is a result of what George Bush and Michael Aquino and others call the Vietnam syndrome. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the military is very disappointed that the, that, the, uh, that the population of America didn't support this outrageously foolish and nonsensical right. and, and destructive war.
I mean, they thought, you know, we were the enemy because we brought it to a halt. Well, that mentality, of course, got transferred into the organized gang stalking program. The right. Mind War paper of Michael Aquino in 1980 right. really lays this out. I mean, this is a mind war. Right. So, so gang stalking, as we see it now, is a complete continuation of the FBI's COINTELPRO counterintelligence program, married to the MK Ultra of the CIA, mm -hmm. married to the Stasi citizen spy networks of these, you know, the East Germans and the Soviets. So, and again, you, and then married to all this very, very high technology from Tesla. Um, so there it is in a nutshell. Uh, it is being used by the power structure, including organized crime, um, as a weapon system. And we are being experimented on like rats. Right. And uh, the, the, the purpose of government is to protect the citizens. Meanwhile, the government is killing them. Right. You know, so it is very dark. It is uh, very dark. People are dying. Many people are dying without ever knowing what happened to them. Right. All they know is they're stressed out, their life's gone bad, people are mean. You know, they're victims of these very, very sophisticated uh, um, mind control techniques, which their government has developed and is using against them with their tax dollars. Maybe that's where it really gets absurd. I mean, our tax dollars are funding this. Right. That's too ridiculous. Well, we should probably we should probably wrap it up. Do you want to, um, Derek? Do you want to say anything? And I mean, the last your last couple sentences were so inspiring and so right on target. That, um, yeah, good place to end. That's a good place to end it. Yeah, I was thinking, boy, he's really, he's really, uh, he's really doing very well. I think we're waking up. I think we can see through people like Alex Jones and uh, Trump, and that that's only happening because people are able to open their eyes. It, it, it doesn't hurt, and it's the only way out of this. There's no future unless we do that. Do you have any closing remarks there, Dr. I, I, yeah, your point is good. There's no free future unless we maintain our free will, mm -hmm. and, and this, uh, these systems are a direct attack on free will, unless we maintain the, uh, uh, the right of dissent. You can't have democracy without dissent. No. And yet these programs target dissenters and whistleblowers and truth tellers, mm -hmm. among others. Um, so yeah, we are up against a network of um, very, very unpatriotic, power-hungry psychopaths right. who are using these technologies and their extreme wealth against uh, everything that America stands for and, and any country that is, is supposedly responsive to to the, its citizenry. So, uh, you know, I say that because I know you're in Ecuador, even though, you know, you're, you're an American in your experience uh, and in your uh, you know, language and outlook and everything. But, um, yeah, this is a global issue. Uh, education, I think, is our best bet. Uh, I think that being optimistic, uh, coming out of fear, as you say, very important. And that is going to be predicated on a better understanding of what this is. Right. And I'm still on that path of trying to understand it. And I really appreciate the fact that you're on this path and that we can do these discussions and share them with people. So, so I thank you very much, uh, Paul, for your, for your tremendous uh, energy and expertise and, and efforts here. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Carlstrom. And uh, we look forward to many, many discussions in the future as you demystify whatever you're whatever you're researching thank you very much have a good evening my pleasure paul thank you bye bye bye